Hi everyone. Today I want to share a new stamp set called Boo to You. It's from the Holiday Catalog and it's fun little Halloween monsters. You get three different little Halloween monsters. There's like a werewolf, zombie, and a little hiding under your bed to scare you kind of monster. And they're just adorable. So this is a kind of Halloween card that's great for kids because it's not too scary. They're cute scary. So that's nice. I like that kind of cute scary as opposed to super gruesome Halloween. And um, these are great for coloring techniques, which are another thing that I really enjoy. So I used blends to color these in, and I think they're just adorable. And so I want to show you a few cards, and then we'll make one of them together. So this first one is using some paper from the Spectacular Bash Designer Series paper. So I used some pumpkin pie in his outfit and um, to bring out the pumpkin pie in the paper. And um, I think you might notice his eyes. They are little googly eyes and they're in an assortment, assorted googly eyes. They're purple and orange and green, pumpkin pie, uh, granny apple green, and gorgeous grape, and then there's some plain uh, white googly eyes as well. And you get a whole bunch of them, and you can stick them in your little monster's eyes. Isn't that fun? Kids will like that. Little googly eyes on the card. And then this next one, same stamp set. And I use little googly eyes on this guy. I didn't give him googly eyes. I could. You can add some googly eyes there. Uh, I wanted to show you this trick or treat here. It's not from the stamp set. This is the stamp set and it's got a couple little sayings. Boo to you and just a little creepy. Very cute. I did want a trick or treat or a happy Halloween so I went to some other stamp sets and normally I don't go to other stamp sets when I'm making videos or showing a product because I like to show the product itself. However, there's a couple stamp sets that I kind of consider must have stamp sets. One of them is called Itty Bitty Greetings, and it has just everything you need for just about every occasion. Mother's Day, baby, Easter, sympathy, engagement, miss you, hello. And today we're using the Trick or Treat, and it's a two box set. So there are 32 stamps in all. So I kind of feel like this is a must have, um, must have stamp set for stampers. And there's a few that say, itty bitty and this one is called itty bitty greetings and there's another one that's itty bitty birthdays and that's another must have and it has a variety of birthdays in different fonts so sometimes you want a little kid font or an elegant font and so that's a great one and then they just came out with itty bitty christmas and look at that one it's got different fonts nice uh different sayings You've got Seasons Greetings, Celebrate the Season, No Peaking Till Christmas, some things that might go good with baking, Sugar Sprinkled Season, that kind of thing. Oh, what yum. So there's a whole variety here. Believe, Very Merry, To and From. This is a great stamp set. So these Itty Bitty, look for the Itty Bitty Collection, Itty Bitty Christmas, Itty Bitty Greetings, and Itty Bitty Birthday. And those you should add those to your collection. So take a look at those. And then... Another brand new kind of must have, in my opinion, a stamp set is called To Every Season. And I really like this one because it focuses on the, the end of the year seasons as well as Valentine's Day. So you've kind of got this quarter uh, covered all in one stamp set with some accents. So you've got Halloween, which is what I'm using today. Happy Halloween. And then it has boo. And then you've got some little accents, uh, bats. And then you've got Valentine, Be Mine, Love You, XOXO, which is really cute, and some heart accents, snowflakes for Christmas time and winter, and then some fall and some thank you, thankful each day, that kind of stuff. For So you've got Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, and Valentine's Day all taken care of with this little two every season stamp set. And the great thing about this stamp set is that it has matching punches. You've got a punch for all these middle ones right here. See this line of middle stamps. So you've got a heart punch that punches out this middle size one. A snowflake. I might do this one. Um, the leaf does this leaf here. And then what I'm showing you today is the bat, which punches out the bat. And I just think it's adorable. I think it does this little bat here. 
see how cute you can stamp it or just use um, some black cardstock which is what I'm doing this little bat here down here super cute and this little bat and this little stamp set are great for this time of year add that to your next order so that's what this trick-or-treat is from it's from the itty bitty greetings and the boo is from the um, boo to you stamp set and what I did I only wanted the boo so I used my marker to only ink up the word boo and that way I was able to eliminate the words I didn't want so that's this card very cute I used um, some blends to color in the monsters and I think that's really fun something I love to do and then the ones we're gonna make together are these aren't they cute so you've probably seen some cards where you block off an area with a post-it or a sticky circle to make a moon and then you sponge your whole background and it's really lovely and I've done a few like that myself and it's a really fun technique but I wanted something fast and easy and cleaner than all that sponged background so this is a fast version of those idea cards so I've made a spooky night sky with with some gorgeous grape which is you know different than the traditional um, blue sky but it's kind of pretty and kind of Halloween feeling I think so we're gonna do that real quick and put these cards together and I have a few tips for how to get um, a nice cut around your uh, monsters and um, how to make this little picket fence I have already made two monsters so let's make the werewolf I stamped my werewolf using memento ink because I'm gonna color it in with stamp and blend so you need to use memento ink and I'm just going to choose some colors. Now on the pants, I'm just going to go with one tone of blends. Now if you are familiar with Stampin' Blends, you know they come in light and dark colors. And so you can get some nice highlights and tones by combining the two. However, his little pants are pretty small. And I am not going to do any shading or blending with the pants. So I'm just going to use um, using the lighter Night of Navy. And then I wanted to use Gorgeous Grape, but there isn't a Gorgeous Grape yet anyway. And so I'm using Highland Heather, but if you use the Dark Highland Heather, it's very close to Gorgeous Grape and it's a very nice accent. They go nice together. And for the jacket, there is enough space that I am going to do some highlighting. So I'm going to do an entire coat of his jacket in the light Highland Heather. And then I'm going to give some accents in the dark Highland Heather and I'm going to kind of get an accent on the lapels and where the seams meet, under the little pocket, his little arm, under his neck, little areas where you think you might see some dark highlights along the side to give it some roundness. Okay, and you say, Beth, that doesn't look very blended. Well, that's because I haven't done the blending yet. So with blends, you can do it lots of different ways. Some people like to start with light and then dark. Some people like to start dark then light. I like to start light, dark, light. So I did my light, then I added my dark highlights, and now I'm going to go back over. And in the areas where I added those dark highlights, I'm going to go over it again with the light marker, focusing on the areas where I added those highlights. And this will kind of blend those areas in. So you won't see that sharp, dark line. It'll be more of a faded line. So I've still got some dark areas, but it's not a sharp, super sharp line. Now the werewolf's face, I decided to do in uh, soft suede. And then I did the inside of his ear and the little tip of his nose um, I just grabbed my petal pink and added a little bit of the dark petal pink and added some petal pink to the centers but then the rest is all soft suede and it sees you can see dark and light and I'll show you how I did that I did the entire area in the light Being careful to miss his teeth. A 
Okay. Oops, I forgot his tummy. Okay, now for this one, I wanted to add some dark little highlights around his face and in the furry tufts on his feet. So I just kind of went in and added little furry lines. And then around his face, I kind of just made little furry lines. Careful to leave some of the light spaces showing so that you can see both the dark and the light together so it looks fluffy. Because we have a cute fluffy werewolf instead of a really scary werewolf. Okay, there's the werewolf. Now I fussy cut the werewolf out with my scissors. These are Stampin' Up! paper snips. They're very sharp and very pointy and they get uh, they cut really nicely when you're doing um, little pieces like this. But I have some tips for you and actually I'll show you after I'm done cutting it. I'll speed up the video while I'm cutting so you don't have to watch a long cutting session. Okay, there's my monster. Now, I'm thinking maybe you can see the difference here if I show you. Look at this monster here, and I mounted it onto a dark piece of paper behind here. The cardstock is such a dark color, and I had a lot of white showing, kind of like here on this werewolf. I'll show you the differences. And I thought that was a lot of white showing. And if it doesn't bother you, then leave it alone. But I also thought maybe I would try something to see if I can get rid of some of that. And so I went over it with a black marker on these monsters. And you don't see, like, see how this monster has no black edge or no white edges around him. But this one does. Now, if you're mounting it onto white, then it doesn't matter at all. It looks great. But and this one's mounted onto white background, so it didn't bother me, but right here, it, I didn't like it as much, and if it doesn't bother you, then it's no big deal, leave it alone. Um, sometimes I make myself crazy when I have all these little tiny details that I do, <laughs> so if it doesn't bother you, leave it. But if it does, maybe try going over the edges after you've cut it out with a black marker and getting rid of some of those white lines and see what you think. So I'll hold the two finished um, werewolf cards side by side and you can see if it made enough difference to make it worth your while or not. Maybe it won't, maybe it will. So all I'm doing is I'm just going over the white edges with my black marker. You can use your black Stampin' Blends or this is just a regular Stampin' Write marker. I especially think it kind of cleans up this little tufted hair area because you can't go in and out all those little strands of hair. So in the comments you let me know if this is insane. <laughs> let me know, Beth you're crazy, why did you bother going to all that trouble? Um, or say, you know what, I do like it better. Okay. So there, I went over the sides, didn't take that long, and now we can put our cards together really quickly. So our card bases are just a piece of 8.5 by 11 cut in half at 5.5 and, and then scored at 4.25. And, and then I've got Gorgeous Grape, and these are cut 4 by 5.25. And, and we're going to sponge the edges. Picking up a little bit of ink onto a sponge, and I'm going to sponge the edges to give it kind of a spooky night sky feel. Okay, and then I used some circle punches to make my moon, my full moon. Now mine are two inches. You can also use um, circle dies, whatever you've got laying around. Actually, I think this was a die that I had made for something else. I cut out centers. So I already had those circles, which was really nice. But this is just a two inch circle punch. So I'm going to put that on my card. One's going to be a horizontal card. One's going to be a vertical card. And I'm just going to add some more 
kind of swipe back and forth some little cloudy areas. And then I'm going to put my moon down and just add little areas of cloud coming in front of the moon. Gonna glue those down. There we go. Now on my werewolf card, I'm gonna add a little bit of designer series paper. This is a piece of spider web paper from this Bootacular Bash paper uh, collection. It's super cute paper collection, so check that out. I'll have links to all these products at my blog, bestpapercuts.com, and you can get a good view of them. Now I wanted to trim off this with a little bit of some new basic black scalloped ribbon, also from the holiday catalog. So many great things in the holiday catalog. Kind of doing two cards at once, since the steps are kind of the same. Okay, so I've got my first card kind of done, and we're going to put our werewolf on there, and you tell me what you think. Does it look better when I colored in the black or not? <laughs> now adding this, mounting this onto black just really makes that sky look spooky, doesn't it? Isn't that great? I love it. And it was so easy. It wasn't a huge sponged project. Okay, there's my werewolf. We're going to add him right on top with some dimensionals. Very fun. Now some other added details were the bats from the Two Every Season bundle, and I just punched out a ton of bats. I want to make sure that there's one going in front of that full moon. There we go. And then we'll put some in the sky. Oh, and some little greeting at the bottom. I made a whole bunch of greetings. This one I did the boo on um, some of the little scraps I had left over when I trimmed down for the card uh, fronts. So I'm going to put that down and I'm going to just give it a little bit of sponging. I embossed the boo. All right, there's the werewolf, very simple. Now you tell me if you like the um, white outline or if you think this was worthwhile. <laughs> Let me know. Oh, on the inside, I used that two every season Happy Halloween. And I really love that. It's great for the insides. There we go. Now, I don't know about you, but I often have little strips of paper left over from making all these card fronts. So I have a little strip of, is it the right size? Yes. A little strip of Gorgeous Grape, and I'm going to just go ahead and put that down right on the side. And some more bats. Why not? There, there's my inside, super cute. All right, so the base of the card is pretty much exactly the same. But you're going to cut out, or punch out, nine or 10 of these little fence posts. Now the fence post is made with the classic label punch. You're just gonna cut it out from some scrap. And then I trimmed them up a little bit so they weren't too tall. So I went ahead and grabbed uh, my paper snips and cut about a quarter of an inch off the bottoms. Okay, now when I put them down on the card, I wanted to space them out kind of evenly so they look like real fence posts. So I just added a little bit of liquid glue to the bottom and I laid them out all standing straight up as if they didn't have any problems. And worked kind of fast. because you don't want the glue to dry because what we're going to do is we're going to knock some of these fence posts over. Okay. 
I'm only putting glue at the bottom because I want to tuck the monster behind them. And it's okay because I'm going to add the, add the railings across the front. That'll stick them down even tighter. So I'm not worried about the fact that they're only glued at the bottom. Okay, so I've got my fence posts down and you can decide how many you need. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to knock some over. Just tilt them. So they're still spread out nicely. Maybe that one's going to go this way. And if the glue is still wet, you have a little bit of time where you can play around with it. There we go. Just like that. And then our little green monster is going to go behind. So I'm going to tuck him down. There we go. I want his arms above the fence. <laughs> and now we need to add our ties. Now that is just a piece of scrap and it's cut. I just cut a little sliver and I believe it's well, I don't know if I even measured it. I bet it's like an eighth of an inch. No, it's a quarter of an inch. <laughs> I don't know my measurements. And it's five and a quarter inches long. And we're just going to go ahead and tie all these little fence posts together. Which is what I was saying about how I'm not worried about the fact that they're only glued at the bottom because we're going to tie them all down right now. This guy's climbing the fence. Okay. Like so. Isn't that just cute? And we're going to put that down on a piece of basic black, just like the other card. And then I've got my zombie guy coming out the front here. Super cute. And then we're going to make a trick-or-treat. Now here I'm using that trick-or-treat from the Itty Bitty Greetings, which is, like I said, one of my essentials. And again, I'm using a little scrap that I have. I love that I get to use up my little scraps sometimes. Silly things like that make me happy. Okay, so I'm going to flag the end. And I'm going to give it a little bit of black ink to spook it up a little bit. And we're going to add some more of those bats. And the inside's going to get the same treatment. I'm going to use that Happy Halloween to every season. Is this going to work? Let's see. Sometimes your scraps can't go down one way. Oh, look at I did my Happy Halloween the wrong way. I forgot this one was horizontal. Thankfully, there's two sides to every sheet of paper. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's project and I hope that you will check out these products at my blog bestpapercuts.com. Um, if you purchase from me, I have a frequent buyer rewards program. So check that out. That's on my blog and you can um, print out the tracking sheet. If for some reason you can't print out the tracking sheet, let me know and I will print it for you and send it. And what you do is you keep track of your purchases and you can earn some free stamp sets. You can pick something from any current stamp set up to a certain dollar amount depending upon how many uh, points you've earned and you can save up your points to get bigger products and um, you can even use uh, the rewards for host sets that you can't normally get unless you have larger orders. So this is a nice way for you to add up some orders and get those hard to get host sets. I didn't point this out earlier but I want to point it out now. <laughs> Cutting out this little monster's mouth is very difficult because it's so skinny. So I just used my blends in the same color. It's such a small space I could have went and used my regular stamp and write markers too, but I don't think you can really see it. And um, maybe you didn't even notice it when I showed the card the first time, but that is actually just colored in and it kind of makes his mouth just go back into the background and you don't even really notice that I didn't cut it out. <laughs> so here are my Boo to You cards. I hope that you like them. They're awfully fun to make. And the googly eyes, add, I can add some googly eyes to all of them. They're just super cute. 
here's the werewolf. Let me know what you think, and um, I hope that you come back again. Thanks for watching. Bye.